Well, ladies and gentlemen, coastal cities are under growing pressure to move people and goods faster, cleaner, and more efficiently. Yet the limitations of today's maritime and aviation systems often stand in the way. Enter the Sea Glider, a new class of vessel redefining what's possible at the intersection of marine and air mobility. So, to take us inside this breakthrough technology and its real-world commercial potential, I'm absolutely delighted to now welcome Adam Triolo, who is the Vice President of Commercial Business Development at Regent. A very warm welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Adam Triolo, Vice President of Commercial Business Development at Regent. Uh, awesome to see you here. I know uh, I'm just the second to last presentation until lunch, so I'm going to make this long and painful for you. So get ready. Um, I actually discovered Regent uh, when I was a professional pilot, right? So I've flown everything from Airbus to turboprops. Um, what is amazing about this technology is just totally unique. Um, we're building something called a sea glider. Um, they actually queued up the wrong presentation. <laughs> so this is tomorrow's presentation. I don't know if you guys can queue up the other one. Um, but what we're building is called the Sea Glider, all electric wing and ground effect sea going vessel. Uh, we've actually been traveling uh, along the, uh, the water here for uh, you know, millennia. And what's amazing about this technology is that we're taking people back to the seas. Um, so we've been a water based uh, you know, society for, uh, for ages. Uh, we've evolved that technology over time, uh, and now we're in the process of going back to the sea again with an entirely new form of transportation. Um, so, again, this presentation is meant to run about an hour, <laughs> so I guess I'll be flying through these slides. Um, but long story short, uh, it all began with the Wright brothers. We transitioned through the industrial age into this all-new technology. Uh, based on uh, you know cars and mass uh, production of uh, of product, um, from there we took to the skies. Uh, so we took to the rail. Uh, we created jet uh, aircraft, but the innovation sort of stopped. Uh, you know, in the 1960s uh, when we entered the jet age. Uh, so fast forward uh, to today, and, and now our cities look very much the way they did back in the 1950s too. So. Uh, we're stuck with, uh, you know, uh, long lines at the airport. We're moving people by air, rail, and sea exactly the way we did uh, back, uh, back in the day. Um, so uh, this, you know, this blockage, this, this, this lack of movement uh, continues, and we need to find new ways to help people transit, you know, these busy population centers. Um, so we've come up with something that's entirely new. Uh, this platform didn't exist until our two co-founders, Billy Tallheimer and Mike Klinker, invented it. Uh, they operate uh, in ground effect just over the water surface, and they allow us to leverage you know, the fact that 40% of the world's communities already live uh, on the coasts, which means we have an opportunity to service more than 4 billion passengers on today's battery technology. So what is a wing and ground effect vessel? Uh, it's a vehicle that makes use of an aerodynamic interaction between the moving wing and the stationary surface below. So the way these vessels work is uh, every time you take off and land in a traditional aircraft, you experience this sensation called ground effect. It's a reduction in the wingtip vortices uh, on the wing. It's that cushion that you feel just before you land uh, in an airplane. We leverage uh, that dynamic space uh, to, to actually fly uh, these vessels. We never leave that wingspan uh, to the water surface. Um, this technology has actually existed since the 1960s, so the Russians, uh, inventors of some of the coolest technology out there, created the Akronoplons. Uh, these were weapons of war. They had those jet engines across the front. They were meant to kind of carry them through the heavy surf. Um, uh, they, would, they would plow through that heavy surf until they could develop enough speed to break the suction of the wing with the water surface and become airborne. Um, we see more modern versions of that in the Airfish 8 and the Air and M80. Uh, these two have planing holes. They're not very maneuverable in the takeoff. They sort of skip and press through the water until they get enough airspeed to become airborne. We've created uh, this new technology that kind of combines, uh, you know, the, the best of previous innovations into one vessel. So 
Uh, we use our hydrofoils to lift the vessel out of the water. Uh, that breaks that heavy to hydrodynamic drag. And then we used advanced battery technology and distributed propulsion to actually um, uh, fly the vessel. We wrap all of this in a, a fly-by-wire flight control system. Uh, it's envelope protected, and that allows our mariners to drive these vessels just like they would a traditional boat, left, right, fast, slow. Um, our vessel is 15,000 pounds, 65-foot uh, wingspan. We carry 12 passengers, and we can do it uh, out to about 160 nautical miles. Uh, again, because we never leave ground effect, uh, we certify as a boat instead of as an aircraft. We give our operators boat controls. Uh, so you drive sea gliders the same way you would drive a traditional boat, left, right, fast, slow. Um, our sea gliders steer around obstacles. They don't go over them. Um, and in that way, we're leveraging 30 years of regulatory precedent as guided by the IMO. Um, wherein we're working with the United States Coast Guard and Lloyd's Register to uh, bring these vessels uh, to market all over the world. So this is how the technology works. It starts by leveraging existing dock infrastructure that's found uh, uh, in every continent all over the, uh, all over the globe. Uh, we can use these basic finger-style docks where we connect up uh, to the vessel. We proceed in float mode out into the harbor. Uh, once we clear those initial obstacles, we actually come up onto our hydrofoil. Um, so you'll see the vessel actually lift up. A hydrofoil is just a wing for the water. So it elevates the vessel up out of that heavy hydrodynamic drag. But what's unique about this state is we maintain our maneuverability while locking in uh, exceptional wave tolerance. We have about five times the wave tolerance of a traditional seaplane. As we push out into open water, the thrust levers are advanced. We automatically take off. The hydrofoil automatically retracts. And this is where we cruise in that cushion of air. Uh, we have a unique perception system that actually uh, is always looking out and around the vessel. This allows the operator to steer again around obstacles instead of going over the top of them. Uh, and this is how we give our customers, uh, our operators specifically, those very unique controls that allow mariners uh, to, to fly these vessels. Um, so you can see lots of opportunities uh, all over the globe. We're building these vessels uh, in Rhode Island. Uh, so we have 255,000 square foot of manufacturing facility. Uh, that's on top of the 30,000 feet we already occupy. Um, uh, this is in addition to uh, a 750,000 square foot facility announced in Abu Dhabi uh, earlier this year. It all started with our quarter scale prototype. This is an 18 foot wingspan, 400 pound platform. It does all of the modes I just talked about earlier, float, foil, and fly. We start out uh, in the dock in float mode. We proceed away from the dock into the harbor in foil mode. Um, the vessel accelerates on its hydrofoils and, and once commanded and reaching that uh, uh, acceptable airspeed, we actually automatically take off. So you'll watch the vessel rotate up into the air as it rotates, the hydrofoil retracts and it settles into ground effect within a wingspan of the water surface, and this is where it cruises. When the operators are ready to slow down, when they're uh, approaching a harbor or approaching a congested space, they simply pull back on those thrust levers. The vessel automatically settles back down onto the water and, uh, and lands. Um, so you'll see that maneuver here. Those landings and takeoffs are, again, totally automatic. Uh, the operator simply adjusts the power setting uh, to make those, uh, to make those uh, uh, things take place. So obviously, we can fulfill a number of potential missions. We are a dual-use company. We've secured tremendous investment from uh, venture capital firms like Point72, Lockheed Ventures, Sierra Nevada Corp, uh, Edge uh, Holdings in UAE. Uh, we have a number of different platforms that are military based. Uh, we have a fully uh, autonomous version uh, of our vessel. We have a hybrid version that goes out to uh, 1,600 uh, uh, nautical miles. Uh, and then we have a, a loyal wingman program where our 18-foot wingspan vessel actually supports operations of the, of the full scale. So we can do everything with these vessels from a military perspective, launched effects, uh, medevac, casevac, uh, ISR, and contested logistics. These are amazing support vessels uh, for our uh, military uh, friends and partners around the world. Uh, on the commercial side, uh, we've got commercial transportation, tourism, cargo, offshore logistics, and special mission uh, you know, from the medevac and air ambulance space. 
Um, we have this huge complement of products that we're using. Uh, this is one of the ways we've built out this massive backlog across the business. This business has only existed for five years. We have more than a $10.5 billion backlog, more than 600 sea gliders sold. The bulk of those initial vessels will come out in this uh, uh, early configuration. That's 12 passengers, uh, cargo door standard. Um, we've got 34 inches of seat pitch and a 19-inch aisle uh, across this configuration. So just unparalleled levels of comfort, massive windows at every station. Um, with our cargo configuration and a cargo door that's standard, we've got a five-zone cargo interior. It gives us a tremendous num uh, number of options. The bulk of our operators are planning to uh, carry passengers during the day and fly cargo at night. So that gives them a lot of uh, options there. Um, on the uh, VIP configurations, we've got a couple of different options for our clients, uh, specifically a, a double club uh, with optional side-facing uh, uh, potty seat, which is occupiable for takeoff and landing. So uh, we've talked with a number of clients across the Middle East and in KSA about uh, this particular configuration that uh, uh, our clients are going to find very useful. And then finally, our special mission uh, use case here for the three-sled uh, uh, interior for air ambulance or a a, a, a double control console maritime patrol ISR platform uh, where we've talked with a number of uh, police and uh, um, uh, coastal uh, protection agencies about. What's unique about Sea Gliders too is they're some of the quietest uh, uh, vessels out there operating today. So we're about 60 decibels less noisy than an equivalent gas turbine product operating on the same routes. Um, so much quieter for the passengers, much quieter for the people that live on these coastal, uh, on these coastal routes. Um, our customers love the product because it's incredibly efficient. So dramatic reductions in operating costs, dramatic reductions in, in uh, both fuel and maintenance, and that allows them to pass those savings on to their clients. We have a number of clients uh, in the uh, offshore logistics space. So we've, uh, we've signed uh, deals with entities like uh, Total and Adnoc. Uh, to provide uh, transportation out to offshore oil rigs, um, you know, out to, out to wind farms. Uh, this is a great way of giving employees in the offshore space a helicopter-like experience, but at, uh, you know, a boat uh, uh, overhead. Um, and then, of course, we talked about the search and rescue applications as well. Um, Sea gliders are meant to work with, uh, you know, some of these new technologies that are coming out. So, you know, whether it's EV tolls to carry passengers that last mile into the city center or EVs, whether it's e-ships that are running up and down the coast, sea gliders provide a turboprop-like speed and comfort. Um, uh, but we can also accomplish those regional missions at roughly a third the operating cost of an equivalent aircraft uh, running those same routes. Uh, we run a number of analyses, uh, you know, starting with Port Miami years, uh, you know, one, three, and five. We can get up to 4,000 passengers a day working with our uh, uh, partners in these different spaces. Um, you can see some of the ways in which sea gliders can plug and play. Many of the, the major ports are located next to uh, airports around the world. Uh, in Miami, as an, uh, as an example, it's only a 15-minute drive from the airside terminal over to Port Miami. Um, so you've got this amazing opportunity to use sea gliders to move people along coastal routes, dramatically reducing congestion at the airport, uh, providing dramatic savings for those aircraft operators that are trying to move people off of those uh, far, less, uh, far less profitable um, uh, routes. Um, so. Um, you can see, as I said earlier, we can park at a, a standard uh, finger-style dock. Um, so with this finger-style dock, uh, you know, these, pro they these cost roughly 20 to, 20 to 30,000 USD to install. So they're very inexpensive to maintain, very inexpensive to install, and they exist all over the place. They're completely ubiquitous. So the fact that we can operate out of existing dock infrastructure means you don't have to build vertiports. You don't have to build landing pads. Uh, you can just, uh, you know, uh, park these things and load and offload passengers. So you can see some of the routes that we've looked at uh, uh, across uh, the Middle East and KSA. Um, you can see uh, how low the ticket prices are and uh, how uh, inexpensive uh, how inexpensive the ticket prices are and how low the, the travel times uh, are. Um, Neon Bay to Amala in just 45 minutes. Um, our, our vessels create accessibility for ports, crews, and an accessible price point. Uh, what makes them a unique opportunity is the way our operators can pass savings. Uh, on to our clients. Um, we're using uh, these relationships around the world to sort of build out this amazing network 
of partners. So we've created these sea glider initiatives in all the markets we expect our operators uh, to perform. And with these sea glider initiatives, we've pulled in all the critical stakeholders uh, that will, you know, make uh, you know a sea gliders a reality. So that's the utility service providers, that's the ports, uh, that's the uh, the regulators, uh, that's the operators, that's the communities. Right? There are certain places around the world where it's very sensitive to operate uh, coastal ships, um, uh, you know, for cultural reasons or otherwise. We've brought those people to the table. We've made them a part of the discussion, and in that way, we're hoping to engage them as we build out um, these critical partnerships for operations of sea gliders down the road. Um, I do want to end on uh, this note here. Um, uh, most people might not know that Regent is a uh, Neom Investment Fund portfolio company. Um, so we've actually been working with the wonderful people uh, in the kingdom, uh, specifically Neom, for the last uh, three and a half years. Uh, they were the largest check in our Series A, and they've been amazing partners to us as we've sought to, to, to build out um, uh, you know, what is the presence for these vessels. Um, Neom is this incredible concept city that's going to be built at the top of the Red Sea, and we're honored to be uh, a part of their strategic uh, maritime mobility plan using sea gliders to provide added connectivity into that space, um, but also demonstrating that these technologies are actually ready today. Um, so as it relates to, to Regent, we'll continue to work with our partners in Neom. Uh, we'll continue to build out and test uh, this technology in Rhode Island. Uh, we'll actually fly the first full-scale prototype uh, here uh, in just the next couple of months. Uh, so stay tuned and look forward to uh, answering any questions uh, offline uh, if you have them. Thanks so much for the time today.